So we're going to begin working with maps in Maxwell Material Editor, or MXED, as it's abbreviated. And the thing to understand about working with maps in Maxwell is that immediately when you load a map, it overrides whatever data is in the chip here in your reflectance. And we'll talk more about that later on. But if there's a chip next to your map, then the chip is basically more or less useless at that point. So how we load a map is this little checker box that you see right here. And so what I want you to do is create a brand new material. Just put a layer in there, basic layer, and then click on this checker box. And what I want you to do is navigate to wherever you have the work files for this series saved. I've got them saved right here. And I've for lesson 0302, we're going to load this colorgrad.png and hit open. The important thing to know about this is that it's a seamlessly tileable texture up and down, but not left to right. And because of that, only the X is going to have any kind of effect here on this one. And I just want you to be aware of that. Even though we'll be talking about different types of tiling in this particular image, we're not going to be seeing it too much. But anyway, at this point, we've loaded an image. All we need to do now is just come over here and just hit our little render button and boom we've got a render now we're not seeing too much of this gradient right now it, it, we're seeing a little bit of color shift back over here starting from purple and kind of going to that middle grayish purple but not really what we're looking for so let's go ahead and stop that and what i want to do now is i want to talk about some of these settings so the first setting here is channel zero and what that basically is referring to is what uv do you want to set for this particular texture. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna use channel zero. However, if you have multiple UVs assigned to your object and you want to have different textures working off of different UV sets, you can assign that right here in this channel. Now, we'll talk more about UVs and UV sets when we get into studio, but for right now, that's where you would assign these. The next thing is the tiling method, and we have several choices here. We have tile X and Y, and this is a Cartesian coordinate system, so this would be your X and that would be your Y. One thing that's worth noting about that is things get kind of squirrely on you when we're dealing with the different types of methods here, and I'll talk about that later on. First, we have X and Y, then we have only X, then we have only Y, and then we have no tiling at all. So this is one of those situations where you might say, okay, well, I don't want any tiling. I want this to only appear one time, and then it's done this would be when you would use no tiling. When you only want to tile on the X or the Y, then you would set it there. But most of the time, I just tend to leave it tile X and Y because if you're having a seamlessly tileable texture or if you have a, a texture that isn't tileable, but you want it to repeat, then this is what you're going to create. So we'll just leave it tile X and Y. And then the next option here is relative and meters. And this is where the squirreliness comes in. These really are not the same thing. Relative is a sort of a object-oriented way of measuring things, meaning that one is the whole object and, it, well, depending upon the UV set, and it can vary greatly. You go to two and it's basically repeating it twice. You go to three, it's repeating it uh, three times. So if you go to four, it's repeating it four times. You go to meters and all of a sudden, now it's gonna take this entire texture here and it's gonna map it to one meter or two meters or three meters. So you're gonna get kind of the exact opposite effect where when you're with meters, when you put a larger number here, you're actually spreading this data out over a larger area. Whereas when you're in relative, when you put a larger number, you're actually cramming more of this into a, a smaller area. So we'll see how that goes here in just a second. Remember I said that only the X is going to be anything that we're working with here because the Y is seamlessly tileable. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with the X here. So I'm going to increase the repeat here and I'm just going to say something like two and then I'm going to hit render over here. So now immediately you can see that we're seeing more of that. And this will be a lot more obvious when we do something like 10, we're going to get kind of a stripey effect. See how that goes. So here we're just repeating that gradient 10 times all the way around this particular object. And like I said, there's no need to change this because it's seamlessly tileable up and down like so. So it's really not relevant 
However, what is relevant is this offset. It, let's say we wanted to move this line. Instead of it being over here, we want it to move it more towards the center. Well, the way that we could do that is we could actually control the offset here. And the offset works as the number one is one whole revolution within this particular texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for something like, say, 0.1, and then just render again. So that shifted it over probably more than I want. So we'll do 0.01. And actually, it looks like we want to do a negative one. Let's try that. There we go. We're getting closer. I'm going to try 0.25. A little bit more. 4.5. And there we go. We're almost there. I'm going to say 0.475. And... We'll call that one more or less exactly where we want it. I'm kind of lining it up with that grid that you see in the background. This is one of those things where you're going to have to eyeball it depending upon the material that you're applying it to because this may look exactly the way you want on this particular ball. However, when you go to change your scene to say something like the drapery, it's going to look very, very different. See how that's not at all what you want. And this has to do with the UVs, it has to do with the scale, it has to do with the shape of the object. This is one of those things where you're going to season these settings to taste depending upon the object that you're actually attempting to map this onto. You really aren't going to tweak these settings too often unless you've got something in particular that you're trying to accomplish. But it's important to understand what they do. This is a repeat and if it's in meters, it's going to go in the opposite direction. This would effectively be dragging this out over 10 meters. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and show you what that looks like. And now you can see that this whole shape here is really just a little tiny chunk of that middle because it's being spread out over the entire 10 meters as far as the width here. And for that matter, if I go ahead and I do something like 0.5 meters, you'll see a very different result. So this is really all about how you scale. And what I would say is when you're doing this, do it on the object that you're actually trying to map your texture onto. This is sort of an abstract exercise right now, but it is unfortunately the nature of the beast. There's no way I could prepare you for every situation you're going to encounter. We'll talk more about this as time goes on, but for right now, that is your basic functionality for your projection properties. The last things that you need to be concerned about here are your image properties. And this is sort of a little image editor. And what I'll do is I'll talk about those things in the next lesson.